Back to basics. Changing motion. Newton's second law. Welcome back to basics. Before you understand momentum correctly, you also need to understand how motion happens in the first place. Moving objects all have momentum that can be measured. But let's find out how we can change that motion through force. Newton's three laws of motion describe how motion is changed or preserved in an object based on the forces that the object experiences. Let's quickly review what those laws are. Newton's first law states that an object continues in a state of rest or uniform velocity unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced force. This means that an object will not accelerate, but that doesn't mean that the object stays still. It means that it maintains its current state of motion. So if it's stationary, it will stay that way, but if it's moving, it will keep moving with the same velocity. Now, when we do apply a net force to an object, it does change motion. That's where Newton's second law comes in. Newton's second law states that when a net force, F net, is applied to an object of mass, M, it accelerates in the direction of the net force. The acceleration, A, is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass F net is equal to M times A. So to summarize the second law in words you or I might use, the harder you push something, the faster it will accelerate. So if the cart in the picture is pushed by two rockets, the size of the acceleration would increase too. The mass also affected acceleration. So the more mass an object had, the smaller the acceleration would be. So, taking our original cart with one rocket and multiplying the mass by two would halve the acceleration. Knowing that a net force is needed to change the motion of an object, it's worthwhile understanding the nature of the second law of motion when a net force occurs. When objects collide or separate from each other, there is always a force involved. The change in motion is best described by Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that if an object experiences a resultant force, the object will experience an acceleration in the direction of the net force applied. It's also worth noting that the same magnitude of force applies to both objects, except in opposite directions. This brings us to Newton's third law, which states that when object A exerts a force on object B, object B simultaneously exerts an oppositely directed force of equal magnitude on object A. So, you might think that this means that both objects would change their velocity by the same amount. But that is only true if they have the same mass. Remember that Newton's second law also says that acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the objects. Something else that also makes a big difference in collisions is time. The shorter the time of collision, the higher the acceleration is. That also means that the force of the collision will be higher. So, understanding how forces work on objects is important to figure out what happens when they collide.